Okay, thank you. And uh, let's move to the third one, Di uh, Diana Mayen. And she's currently the head of communication and marketing at the German Ocean Museum. So we are going to an uh, ocean now, okay? So let's welcome uh, Diana. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, we, we really have to shift our minds now <laughs> from cultural heritage to natural nature. And um, yeah, my presentation is about um, the oceans and the power of our museum um, to take action for the oceans and for the society this way as well. Let me explain really quick where I come from. It's a, a very small town in the north of Germany, um, very close to the Baltic Sea. So um, we are not a big city, not a um, big museum, um, as you might know from Berlin or Hamburg. Um, we, have, um, we were founded about 70 years ago in Stralsund in a former monastery and um, throughout the years we developed and we had two smaller branches in the surroundings and in 2008 we opened the Ozeaneum on the Stralsund, Stralsund Harbor Island and we were very um, well thankful for having been awarded European Museum of the Year in 2008. What's special about the museum is the combination um, between exhibitions, of course collections, and um, aquaria. So we have living displays and that um, makes us um, well, um, very well visited, um, especially from families. More than 50% uh, of our visitors are families. And for such a small city, um, we had years after the opening of the Oceanium with almost a million visitors, which was very a lot in that area. So I think um, that's a great basis for having power to communicate um, the protection of the oceans um, to our audience. And of course you all know the UN Sustainable Development Goals, but since one year um, they focus on the number 14 of those goals and it's the life below the water. So a year ago the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development started and we got involved right from the start. The mission of this um, Ocean Decade is um, the science we need for the ocean we want and therefore there have been seven goals defined and um, with our first action and we just started, um, we focused on the inspiring ocean and I brought you three examples today how we did this um, throughout the um, last month. Um, first of all, we were wondering if it's possible to put science in motion and um, we are a place uh, for science transfer, of course, but we also wanted to discover new ways to um, bring it to our audience. And therefore we invited um, dancers from Italy and Spain. We um, had sociologists from South Germany. We had also our scientists from the museum and we brought them all together to discover our museum, discover our collections, as you can see on the picture on the left, and discover the surroundings at the Baltic Sea. And then they, well, digested all this um, knowledge and they transformed it into um, workshops. Um, so we had workshops at the museums, um, with children, dance workshops, but they also had interventions at the round tour, so that was very interesting for the visitors as well. And they even had interventions at my colleagues' offices, so that was kind of surprising for them. <laughs> And after only three days of um, well, having known each other, um, they um, did an event uh, where they um, showed all the um, problems they, they, got, they learned about and also the fascination of the seas in, in this performance. And that was really um, emotional and amazing to me. Um, just imagine dancers kind of swimming on the ground of the exhibition hall. That was really, really nice. 
Another um, action we have taken um, in the early year um, was the cooperation with an um, art project. It's called Tainted Ocean Love. And I know um, you have seen those pictures um, similar to the one on the left, um, fish uh, who got caught in fishing net and, and ghost nets and are dying there. Um, and the makers of the art project, um, Tainted Ocean Love, they inverse the perspective. Um, they put human beings in the situation of the victims for the deeds they usually do in nature. And um, another special thing about that is um, they work together with professional water sports men and women who are well naturally connected strongly to the oceans and want to protect them. So on the right picture, that's a professional windsurfer. Um, well, when the Ozeanium was planned, um, somehow they forgot uh, room for special exhibitions. So we had um, to make a decision um, how to show this art project at our museum. And uh, we decided to show only one picture at a time, but really, really large. I will show you that. Um, but before we got started in spring, um, I thought it's interesting since we come from the NPR perspective um, to invite media to um, making off um, of one of those motives. And this is a professional sailor, Hannah Andersen. And this picture has been made in March uh, this year. And the Baltic Sea had like seven degrees and she was really a professional sailor when, when we did that. Unfortunately, um, media was not very interested at that time to um, participate, although it was all well prepared. <laughs> well, we finally um, hung the picture with Hannah at our museum foyer, and now you see it's like 10 meters high, four meters wide, and on the left picture um, beneath Hannah, you can see the initiator of the art project, that's um, Ann-Kathrin Schröder, a journalist. And in between, um, you see the um, explanation of the UN Ocean Decade, um, well, to introduce it to our audience. The last example uh, was an event at the end of May. Um, it was about community participation, about asking questions to ocean science, and especially asking how do we want to live with the oceans in the future. And we just not invited like um, the community, it was free of admission. We also invited a local dance group and they had just um, their piece about surviving the COVID-19 pandemic and um, they um, put pieces out of that um, into this evening and that was really good. And um, like Matthias d mentioned it the other day, um, we had a hot seat on the podium um, that night as well, um, where um, people from the community could ask their questions about the oceans. And we also did get some answers uh, that evening and uh, therefore uh, some kind of an idea how to go on working um, with the ocean decade. And well, what we learned, um, it took a long breath and a lot of curiosity, as you can imagine on the picture on the right with the dancer in that white costume. <laughs> and it was um, also about interdisciplinary ideas, new ideas, thinking away from the traditional round tour, and especially to coordinate a lot of partners, which I tried to show on the left picture. We also had a lot of um, well awareness um, with these actions um, on different media, but what I think um, was really important um, is that we got involved with new um, communities, with the um, water sports people, with the dancers from our community, so um, and also with the journalists and the new photographers. That was um, really interesting for us. And since we are supposed not to forget the digital, <laughs> um, we. We did um, um, films on that. I can't show them right now, but I brought you the links if you are interested. Have a look. And well, I really had to hurry. Thank you. <laughs> I hope it was not too fast. Thank you, Diana. Uh, any questions or comments from our audiences? What has been the reaction to that? Uh, monumental photograph, which is very, I mean, how are people responding to that? 
Well, um, we we show this now in the main season. So there are about like 5,000 people each day at the museum. And um, I think um, they were really impressed from the size. So that really uh, got some attraction. And they were thinking about it because um, you had to look very closely. Um, this is about microplastics. and. If you have a close look, um, you see we used sweets and candy to um, because we didn't want to pollute the beach with with plastics and and that's what um, children find out if they look closer. They oh that's how did they do that? So yeah, um, we get a lot of um, feedback also on the social media channels. Do you think there's any chance? Will this translate into action to people using less plastic? Do people not put, uh, picking up trash on the beaches or w anything like that? Yeah, we did um, gather a lot of experience with that. We started already 2014 um, presenting this problem. And plastic was quite easy, but in 2018 we started um, uh, talking about um, noise pollution of the seas. And that's a really hard one for a museum because you can't show it. You have to um, listen and um, um, we had to find ways um, to show our audience that it's not just the big whale who's um, well suffering from noise pollution, it's also a small crab or other animals, like all animals are affected. And yeah, people learn um, at the museum and um, I think um, since they come to see the aquaria, to see the exhibitions, it's a good way um, at our museum to show them also the problems be because initially they come to be entertained to do something with their family. Hopefully it, translate into it translates into actions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, I found the event where the community kind of asked questions oops, uh, to scientists in the museum fascinating because there is uh, some so much more divided between, as we feel that sometimes there is a gap between communities and the science community. So I think it's a really nice event that you did. And how did you uh, structure the question collecting part? We started talking, um, well, on the podium was our museum's director, who's an oceanographist, and we also had um, environmental activists on the podium and um, also the initiator of Tainted Ocean Love. And so it kind of developed with the moderator. And um, with all the preparation, it was the first big event after the regulations have been put down um, at some point. We also have been asked critical questions. It was about keeping living animals at the aquarium. Yeah. And so um, that, that was something I, I know from the social media, but um, we di haven't had that at the museum So um, in an event. So that was um, the other part of being asked questions.